welcome to the Video Simplified podcast where I help you simplify the video creation process to help you reach wider and connect deeper with the people that need you the most. From learning to use your camera to simplifying video strategy to help you grow your brand and share your vision using video. So let's jump right into today's episode. What is up, entrepreneurs? Welcome back to the Video Simplified podcast with me, your hostess, the mostess, Diana Gladney. I'm super pumped and excited because number one, my book, The One Right Video, is available for pre-order or depending on when you're listening to this, it may already be available. So this is a print proof copy. It let me go ahead and check. So yours, of course, wouldn't have the banner on it. And if you're listening to this episode, then all I was doing was holding up the book. Now, make sure you go to onerightvideo.com. Depending on when you're listening to this, it could be available for pre-order or it could be available for purchase. So go to onerightvideo.com and check that out. But I wanna dive into this week's episode talking about AI technology. And if you haven't been hip to the game, as it were, let me bring you up to speed. AI is artificial intelligence. And I don't think that that concept is anything that's new to entrepreneurs per se, or new to the world in general, but it is something that's new to us being able to use it and actually in a way that's super duper valuable. Now, I'm not going to give you any specific ways right now on exactly how to use it, but I do want to give you some ideas to start thinking about how you can start to refine your workflow process that already exists, maybe cut some of that time from your team, which means you honestly can double your production because AI can take some of that heavy lifting that used to have to be manual entry work. And now your team can start advancing to doing something else that actually makes sense in the business. Whether or not you realize that you probably have already been using AI technology. I know that we have in the business for a little while now, for a couple of years, honestly, and it's been amazing. It's not been anything to uh, necessarily write home about, but I think for a lot of you, you will get familiar as soon as I say this with a particular program because it started to, again, condense the time frames for how long it takes to get some work done for something that may be manual entry or just honestly tedious. And that would be Descript. Descript is one of those first programs where we're able to see um, like it can clone your voice and make it seem like that, like right now, this could all be AI if you're listening to it, but it's actually me speaking. But I've done that before for certain things where I needed to fill in a word or something, didn't feel like re-recording. We could use Descript and it actually can do that with me typing in the stuff. We have vidIQ, which honestly has been ahead of the game for last two years, I know for me keeping track of watching what they were doing. And if you use vidIQ, um, like the uh, subscription that we have allows for me to um, get this AI headline generator where it can kind of take the general thesis of what the video is about, what you're titling it and give you different suggestions or start recommending you to uh, certain things like your daily ideas, stuff like that. There's also been programs like Jasper AI that helps with copywriting, which is writing the words that sell. So any of your landing pages, stuff that you use on your website to try to convince and convey a message to your ideal target audience, different viewers that may be coming from the web or what have you. Now, when we have been using it, we've used it for um, generating emails. We've used it for like individual product sales. Uh, it's like a, another program that I was using that will help to generate certain things or rewrite the copy uh, in a different way. But the number one thing I think for a lot of entrepreneurs, content creators, copywriters, whatever the case is, this gets rid of the blank cursor. Uh, I love my, my buddy, Brian uh, Swatowski, I think is how you pronounce his last name. To put a, a, a link to uh, v Brian's book, he's super, super duper incredible. It's my brother from another mother. Now, him and his wife, Noel, they're amazing creators. Got a chance to uh, really connect with them in person when I was in Spokane, Washington about two weeks ago. And I was there for like two weeks. <laughs> so I've been gone for a little while. But he mentioned something and it's it's the idea of like the blinking cursor. So for a lot of writers, again, whatever it is that we are writing doesn't mean you have to author a book like the one right video, but it does mean that like your emails, uh, it does mean the subject line. That's like one of the number one best ways that we're seeing AI in a daily way work for us is just simply by being able to fix email subject lines. There's another tool 
uh, by co-schedule for like headline analyzer that for me, I always think very black and white. I'm not uh, someone that does like emotional based purchases for real or uh, some of those other things like depending on your personality type, you can do a myriad of stuff. But my brain is very logical. It's black and white. That's not always great for sales when you do want to um, start to dive in and really know your customers and let them know that you understand their pain points. To do that, I've been using a series of tools in order to make sure that the language is a certain way. You even may have seen like AI stuff with Grammarly. If you look in the bottom right when you're typing something with Grammarly, you'll see like the little green bubble and it'll say like what the emotion is. Again, for my personality type and the kind of person that I am, I'm very black and white and sometimes something can come off like super harsh and I don't mean for it to, uh, but I'm just being frank and direct. And again, my brain is analytical. So I'm thinking in terms of black and white, not thinking that some things that you may say, if it's just too straightforward, it can cut and it can hurt a little bit, hurt somebody's feelings. So I'm always consciously aware of how am I saying something? How is what I'm saying being perceived? And if, if this is something that's really going to be helpful or harmful, um, or even potentially just seen the wrong way. And I've been working on my communication skills for about the last four to five years, very, very deeply on that. But having this AI technology helps when I put my first layer of thinking, my first brain thoughts in an email or in a document, because I don't want to accidentally send something. I'll use something like Grammarly to just start making sure that the, the tone is correct. Is this conveying the same message, but the tone, can it be a bit more personable? Now, I, thankfully, I've handed off a lot of emails to my assistant because she has really great tone, very nice, very uh, genuinely and sincere, like just, you know what I mean? Like, so that's her, her lane, a hundred percent. She can help transform my words and make it good. But what happens with AI now, you think through like your workflows and your processes, AI is going to completely change how we work. Something like the tonality, and we identify this using like the brand voice guide. What is the voice uh, and the guide for your brand? Um, what should it sound like? What's the personality? What's the vibe uh, that you're giving? Even when it comes to videos, there are some times where I'll say like, oh, this, 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 the vibe is off. This is not fitting the vibe for the video, not what I'm imagining it to be like. The music's too slow or maybe it's too fast or whatever. So that kind of stuff. But from the written portion, to the video side of the work that we're doing, to like sales page and landing pages. AI is completely revolutionizing everything. And if you haven't heard about chat GPT, that's by OpenAI, uh, this thing is incredible. I'm doing a talk at Social Media Marketing World. I'm extremely honored to be invited back. And I'm gonna be talking about how AI, AI uh, and video content creation can become just a masterful piece of work that again, saves your team time with sometimes the manual entry work. And honestly, just, it's like having a virtual assistant, like one or two of them, at least for free. Now chat GPT did just start uh, charging about $20 a month, which is an absolute steal. If you want to get like advanced features or access or whatever. But what this does is you can take your voice, your, again, your brand voice, not your physical voice. There's some stuff about that too. I'll come back to that, but you can take your brand voice and say, craft an email to this kind of a person, an entrepreneur getting started in video content creation. So you're giving the thing context. You can say, uh, it's for X, Y, and Z product that it starts from today until Friday. Uh, with the specific dates and the deadline and that you want it to be very human, uh, very nice, kind and open, uh, but also have a sense of urgency. And you can submit that into this chat GPT system and it'll kick back for you a legit email that you can use. That turns something that maybe I may do to a 15, 20, even 25 minute task because it doesn't take that long to write the initial email, but keep refining it and going layers deep until it actually has that identifiable brand voice that I want and not just what I'm thinking of the checkbox of things that the email needs to have. And that completely condensed that time. So maybe it goes from a 25 minute task to a three minute task. Also think about this. If you look at any of the services that you've been using, 
with any of all of them, all of them right now have where you can use AI or they're using AI somewhere, whether it's an email, again, subject line generator, where it's checking the copy or writing the emails for you because they got access to chat GPT's API that lets you integrate that into whatever it is that you're doing. But one of the best ways that I'm seeing this being implemented, it's a lot of different ways, but if you're a copywriter, it, hell, if you're just a business owner, Elysium Rider, which I'll put a link to this in the show notes and in the description for the video podcast, but Elysium Rider by my mentor, Ray Edwards, crafted to specifically use his pastor framework, give you everything that you would need in order to start crafting the email, the subject line, the landing pages or whatever. And it's like having Ray on the computer with you 24 seven. Like that's how good this stuff is. Now, granted, you still need to know your, your customers. You still need to know the things that they are struggling with, or if something that maybe it kicks back for you isn't right, but that process takes way less time than the initial top to bottom thought process. Now, one of the best hacks that I can tell you right now, I don't care what system or tool that you're using, imagine this to be like a person. This is how I'm approaching using uh, AI in my business and especially with uh, more tools and stuff, having the integration with chat GPT is making sure that it already understands our business. But I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that. I wanna tell you uh, real quick about uh, my new book, but right after this week's Gear Fix. This week's Gear Fix is brought to you by my brand new book called The One Right Video. Are you an entrepreneur struggling to get your brand noticed through video content? Look no further. The One Right Video is the ultimate guide to creating videos that will amplify your brand and grow your business. It's jam packed with practical tips and strategies to help entrepreneurs just like you succeed in video content creation. Don't let your competition get ahead. Mark your calendar for March 1st and be among the first to get your hands on a copy of The One Right Video. Go to onerightvideo.com. And with that, let's get back into this week's episode. So my initial book that I was writing was not called The One Right Video. This is after uh, working with a coach uh, and, and business coach going through making sure that the the book was okay. Now, a lot of the meat of the content is still like in my physical book, like it's still in here, but the language is different. I had a whole other title. Um, and so when I sent the title out to beta readers, like I got some great feedback, but it was also still, I think for some of them, they're kind of too close. So they're not seeing it for who like the book is for. But the way that like I've been able to use AI, even in the book, is not to write a chapter for me or anything like that. But if you remember, I was saying like your brand voice guide, when you think about what it is that you constantly say. So if I say like the bees knees hall of fame and say that, that it, that means it is the highest, the absolute best unequivocal with no competition quality thing, whether it's camera, candy, coffee, whatever. I can say the Bees Knees Hall of Fame means that it's it's the best. And if I say um, it's sitting sideways, that it's no good. So whatever my, my terms and the things that I usually use, if I say uh, it is the White Chocolate Hall of Fame or, what you know, whatever. But something like the Bees Knees Hall of Fame, that's like it's the best of the best. In chat, GPT or any of these AI systems, I can say, remember like that phrase or this is what that means. And so it can revise that email. If I say rev revise it to add that this program is, or this new software tool or this new course is the Bees Knees Hall of Fame X, Y, Z. It will already know the context of what that means and revise the email. Now, the way that I was able to use it in the book, because there are some times for me, I find myself something that's like super too wordy. And it's just like, that's again, that first layer of thinking. So it's just, like you regurgitate, not regurgitate, but you vomit just all over the place, right? You just, it's a complete brain dump. That is not going to work for the book. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody wants to read something that's like three times this size if it could have been said in less words. And I was very consciously aware of how thick I wanted this book to be and how thin I wanted this book to be. 
um, so that it's not watered down. It's not bloated with unnecessary stuff. And it literally just gets to the point. And so what I was able to do is take and put like those brand elements into chat GPT worded in such a way that it understands what certain things mean, uh, what, you know, some of our core values in the company are, um, even just like, again, starting to create this memory bank of things that it should be applying. I can say now this book is based and it's for content creating entrepreneurs that completely gets rid of sometimes like it could be like video gamers, not that they couldn't get value out the book, but it's like, again, with anything, who's your target audience, who is this best for, and who is this wrong for all content should be attracting and repelling somebody. And so if I'm saying that, then I'm like, okay, it's not for this kind of person. So that kind of language again, doesn't work. So whatever it may be kicking back to me, but I could put like a paragraph in there for the book and say, condense this down into a hundred words uh, and revise this using the target audience. I don't have to restate all the maybe previous things that I've, I've worked in and put into chat GPT or any of the other AI systems that still use that uh, basis it's underneath. So like the cover may be, or whatever program may be, who you ever it is that you bought something for. It could be Elysium, it could be any of these other companies, but underneath it's like chat GPT, but the filtration of the in-between the two is again, it could be the Ray Edwards systems. It could be Sean Cannell systems. It could be like whatever. So everybody's thing is slightly different because it's customized to them. That being the case, which I am working on my own stuff in the background. So more details coming on that, but I can take this thing and start to form it to be and remember all the stuff that I want based on some of these entries. Look at like the titles that you need for YouTube videos ideas that you need again taking large paragraphs and i'm like can this is down to 100 words i don't have to use what it kicked back to me but what it can do is give me a new idea if it gives me a new idea on how to reapproach something it's like oh i completely forgot that so what i find it being like extremely valuable for is being able to see outside the frame have that second person that's like a co-owner of the business for you remembers all the stuff, understands the values, knows the brand voice, all the blah, 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 blah. And so when you, when it's repeating and kicking back info, you can use it. Workflows cut down, email timeframes cut down, our response time increases, our response time becomes more efficient. I think uh, since this really has opened up and become like something that's globally accessible, I believe right now, it's completely changed how we're able to work. And I honestly, I, and I'm not saying this like for, what is it, hyperbole? <laughs> but I 100%, 1000% believe AI technology will completely change and revolutionize how we do business, how we do business, excuse me, let me say that in English. And it will completely revolutionize how we serve our customers and how we best serve our clients. 100 and a thousand percent, <laughs> both of them, a thousand percent, I believe AI technology is going to completely revolutionize how we do business with our customers and with our clients. That also means base level things that used to be, you know, a PDF download that somebody can buy. It used to be base level services, maybe you video editor, thumbnail creator, all that stuff. Like there's images and stuff in the book that were generated based on AI in the book. And it looks like something that maybe, uh, you know, you had somebody to make for you or it looks like, you know, but it's not. So that means a bunch of people on Fiverr didn't get paid or they weren't even considered. They weren't even a thought. So it, like I said, it's going to completely change how we work in our business. So I would encourage you think about what are all the things from the start of your day to the end of the day that you use that either could be refreshed and refined that need to get done. It's just like that endless to-do list of when you have time, you'll get to it, but you kind of never really have time. All that stuff. Like I think like the world honestly is really about to change, not because like it's all, oh, it's amazing, but think about this. This is a perspective that I've, I've been pondering on this on when we went to like the, the Gutenberg printing press 
changed the world. No longer is communication only orated and remembered, but it's read. It's put in some immortal, tangible thing like your words live on. Right. And I'm not just saying this because my book, uh, but, you know, like it's, it's like think about like on a whole deeper level. The other thing is this. When we went to telephone transmissions, electricity, again, the world changed when the smartphones came out, when the iPhone dropped, like granted, it was some phones trying to be smart. And if you really are old enough, you remember you had to use something like a stylus or your nail. And it was those kind of smarter phones, but not quite smart um, that you had to use. And so it was like, I think it's like capacitive in some other way uh, to use it. But when Steve Jobs announced the iPhone, then like BlackBerry got put on notice. <laughs> it completely revolutionized and changed how we work, how we consume content. Like it opened up a whole bunch of other stuff. Like remember the campaign there's an app for that. It's like, oh, you need to send an email. There's an app for that. So it wasn't just like the internet, which that was another monumental shift. And I believe AI is going to be another monumental shift for those that are willing to be consistent and honestly put in the work. Everybody's using it now. Give it five years. And the same people that's kind of been, like Sean says, like dipping and dabbling, they're not going to do anything. They're just going to keep playing in the pot, right? Playing in the pot, not really doing anything. So I think like the initial hype will wear off, but I think this is going to accelerate completely how we do business and how we work. I just encourage you to look it through your workflows, look through your existing workflows. And if you could cut that down by half, what does your work week look like now? What does your work month look like now? How much more time maybe could you get back with your family? How much more time could you invest in maybe actually getting to travel uh, a bit more as things, you know, continue to expand and open up and whatnot and whatever? What does it make possible for you? What does the AI technology make possible for you? I think we haven't scratched a scratch on what this is going to look like, but from a video content creation perspective, I'm seeing stuff from like my editors and stuff, I'm looking at what programs, what plugins, what things will we need, what computers will we need in order for us to be able to go to this next level? Because like stuff like the mistakes, or if I say watch for certain spikes that's between a certain decibel. So when I do like my editor doesn't have to look for that. Maybe we run a program that takes all that stuff out. So it may say if anytime you hear this snap sound or whatever, that's so within such and such decibel range, cut at least 15 to 30 seconds, or maybe you have certain variations of them. So if it's a podcast, maybe it's 30 seconds or a minute before cut it out or until the next silence gap or whatever. And so I'm, that's the, that's the kind of stuff I'm thinking about. Like what can it cut down for my video editor? What can it down for my, what can it cut down for me? in my daily workflow and stuff. The other thing also with the voice technology stuff that we're seeing like Descript just go crazy with, for me still dealing with like the stage four endometriosis stuff, um, even right now, you know, have the, the massager and the heating pad on, it's time to take some more medicine to eat, take a break. Like since I got back from out of town, it's been rough, physically rough. You know, my team was here, they could tell you. It's been rough. I haven't been well physically all days and at all times. Like, it's just like, I don't have anything else in me. I can't do anything or I'm just in so much pain. For the voice technology stuff, it'll be different with some of the deep fake stuff. That's a whole other conversation to say, what if this entire podcast was AI generated? Think about that. It already can replicate my voice. That's possible. And there's some other stuff I'm watching in the self-publishing space, uh, courtesy of my buddy Dale uh, L. Roberts over at self-publishing with Dale. And it's some stuff with Audible. Of course, I got to do the audio book for my, my book, The One Right Video, depending on when you're listening to this, it may already be out. But if I'm having days where maybe I'm not feeling great and I need to do a podcast, 
right now already, I could type that up in Descript, have it generate my voice and export it. And I never had to do anything or my assistant could, or we could run a program or a plugin or a script that does that and kicks it out. And the days that I don't feel well, so my workflow of not being able to always operate at hundred percent completely changes. When you think about that kind of stuff, that's already happening. This is not a one day and eventually kind of talk. This is a right now talk. Like it's, I've already tested some stuff that can like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm already developing some stuff on the back end around all of this. So I just think like for whatever your business is with coaching, consulting, real estate, uh, if you're a copywriter or if you're a marketer or for social media, like whatever that thing is that you're doing, think about your workflow and where are some of the things, repetitive, tedious, recurring tasks that might be needed uh, to get done but could be a program or something else that you add. Of course, it's going to be subscription based. Um, at this point, it's just the best uh, financial model for a lot of businesses that are software um, or software as a service company, that SaaS company. So that's what I believe. That's what I think and, and I can foresee happening. And only time will tell. But I'm absolutely curious. What are your thoughts on AI? Are you already using it? Have you already been experimenting with it? Or... Do you think that again, it's just the fad and I, you can think what you want to, but you're welcome to be wrong on that note. I will say that I don't think it's going to replace people, but I do think it will replace things that some people have been doing, but it will absolutely elevate every industry. So the bar just has been raised significantly with just this access to AI technology and more to come. But that's where I'm going to leave it for this week's episode of the Video Simplified Podcast. If you haven't done so already, make sure you leave a rating or review. And if you come into San Diego or already live in the area, make sure you check out my talk uh, that I'm doing that's going to be on AI for video content creation at socialmediamarketing.world. Uh, and that is going to be in March of 2023. So make sure you get your tickets, come join, hook up. We'll be there. I'll be there. I'm saying we because I got some friends coming with me. So. But as I love to end all of our episodes, the winds of life blows on us all, but it is how you set your sails. So set your sails accordingly. With that, guys, with passion, I'll see you on the next episode of the Video Simplified Podcast. Take care. Thanks for tuning into this week's episode, but the value doesn't stop there. For more in-depth trainings, courses, and growing your brand using video, join the Video Simplified community at videosimplified.live.